All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got Victory Monday here. Green Packers podcast on my block. I'm Mike Wall. You can find me at MikeWall68 on Twitter, process to perform on Instagram. If you're enjoying the show, please don't forget, subscribe to it. Hit that like button. Uh, funny story, guy hits me up, I think on Twitter, and goes, hey, Mike, you know, you got to ask these guys to hit the like button because that's important. It goes into the algorithm. I said, oh. Technology, man, I'm stuck in the 60s. I wasn't even born yet. But I will tell you this. <clears throat> it's good to win. I don't care how old you are. The 23 to 20 Packers pull off a win versus the Chargers. Justin Herbert comes in. I, you know, I don't have a man crush on him or anything, but that kid, that kid's unbelievable. But they have six drops. Packers take what they're what they're given as far as I think offensively did a really good job. Yards after catch was huge. Jordan Love has his first 300 yard game. We'll get into all of it, but really good win. We'll break down some film on it here in a second. But I want to mention that our show is sponsored by Bet Online. Bet Online. .ag and the last in the major sports leagues is off and rolling and college basketball is ready to go as well. Bet online remains your top spot for all your live betting and action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, and NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action along with every sport available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time. So head to Bet Online site today and remember to use our promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Listen, great. Anytime you win, it's good. I, we're not we're not we're not that team that's jockeying for first round positions, and we could go into like man, that would even help us draft wise, anyways. But we break the twenty mark, which I don't remember the last time we had over twenty points. It feels like it's it's been over a month, and we've always been kind of saying in this on this show at least. Listen, if you get over twenty, you got to expect to win, and you're not always going to do it, but it's a good indicator. Can you, if you break the twenty, this defense just feels like. I'm going to say this a little bit later, but this defense, we we always, everyone's always down on this defense and whatnot. I think we're looking at it the wrong way. Well, let me get my, my, my two main themes of the day. Number one, Jordan Love goes for 322. So he's 27 to 40, 322 yards, uh, two touchdowns, no picks, no picks. I think he got sacked twice. Um, we, we hold the ball. Listen. It's a learning process. So what do you see from Jordan Love? Because you all we're sort of looking for is progress right now. We're four and I think we're four and six now. You're looking for progress. He took what the defense gave him yesterday. It started early on. First play of the game. Just take what hey, was it eight yard route? Eight yards is good enough because we're moving the sticks. Take what the defense gives you. You have Wicks going three for uh, 91 yards. You have Jaden Reed going four for 46 yards. Yards after catch was huge yesterday. Got some big plays in the running game from non-wide res- or non-running backs, which Still can't run the ball. That's unfortunate. But non-running backs got us really good yards in, in the running game. We're playing against the worst passing defense in the league. Uh, Brandon Saley, this Vic, Vic, Vic Fangio, coaching tree, and you know he gets all upset after the game yesterday. And it's like, I mean, I I have no dog in the fight. But listen, if I was if I was on that defense and and that dude's calling it, and we line up for the the, the game losing touchdown. Uh, played at Romeo Dobbs, and I don't even have a guy covering the, uh, a man over on that side. I'm asking some questions too, as far as as our, our preparation, right? I mean, it's nuts. But Jordan Love, you want to see every week that he's just getting better. That's all we're looking for, right? Are we continuing to develop? What are we talking about? Because he's got the arm, he's got the talent, he's got the 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 the, the talent, like the tangibles, pre snap indicators, post snap processing. What's your speed of process? What's your speed of thought? So we can turn that into action. And then we have to work on some little things. Like yesterday, he misses a couple. Again, he missed a couple, like, not gimmies, but, I mean, gosh, the one down the side of the Musgraves probably, you know, with 70-yard touchdown. And every, that blows the doors open the game. So you've got some opportunities there to really do some great stuff. And that's what happens. This is one of the – it's not one of the first games, but it's, it feels like one of the first games in a while where at every single point, I'm looking at Matt LaFleur as a play caller and the offensive staff as somebody who put this whole game plan together and going – Dude, you nailed this game plan at every level. And our guys didn't – our guys, I'd give them an A for for this game plan. I'd give us a C for execution, right? I think the, I think the game plan, the, the, the way they thought about the running game, the way they thought about the, the passing game, the way they thought about protecting makes 
hundred percent to me makes a to- total sense. Putting tight ends in a position to be successful in the running game. Were they sometimes? Right? It's 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 give and take. Guys made a lot of plays with the ball in their hands. You have these little speed wicks, Reed. You have these guys that are speedy. It's like, dude, give them the ball. We don't need to have them run deep. Right? We don't need to connect on the deep balls. We don't need to do all that. We still miss the deep ball. We still miss some of the flat stuff. We, you know, we we miss some of that, and he'll get better because that's that's part of the game. Like we expect every pass to be good, but you know, if you've ever played sports, you realize like you're not making every shot. But I thought he took a step forward in pre-snap indicators and post-snap processing. And whether that's because they're they're the literally the worst defensive or passing defense in the league or not, you know, right now I'm going to take it as really like the game plan, really like what he was doing. If he's, you know, if he's making a decision to throw the out early and that's what they're going to do because that's what the read they have. And if it's a close pass and he still makes it, I think, the second or third play of the game, great. Good throw. Doesn't matter to me. However they want to roll that out, as long as we're consistent in doing things the way that they're being taught, that's fantastic. That's the first thing I, I, I take away. The second thing is, or the theme, is that that Wisconsin sunshine is just too bright for Los, Los Angeles Chargers, man. Six drops. Six drops. At least three of those are going for scores. So they're taking points off the board. The Packers need to be the team. If you want to get to anywhere as far as, not this year necessarily, but you want to get to the, you, know, you want to win the division again, get to the conference championship, get to the Super Bowl. You got to beat the teams that are going to give away games. And a team like the Chargers, who has so much talent on the offensive defense, both sides, so much talent. And I hope Joey Bosa is okay, man, because he's one of my favorite players. I, he goes out early. That sucks. Even if you're playing against him, man, it sucks to see somebody get hurt, especially guys you're just like, man, I want to see that dude roll today because I just want to see the way he moves against him. You want to you test out Zach Tom against him. But they're so talented. For them to score 20 against us and have six drops, I mean, Justin Herbert goes 21 for 36, 260, two touchdowns, runs for 73. There's nothing that guy can't do. He's unbelievable. And when he hits you, he hits you in the chest. I mean, the ball's right here. You might as well put a target right here. And they're still dropping it. He's absolutely exceptional. So you look at the game and you go, okay, he has those numbers. Austin Eckler's averaging 6.4 yards per carry. He only has 10 carries. I don't know why. Uh, Keaton Allen goes 10 for 116, has a touchdown. He has two drops that uh, – two drops that – Definitely took points off the board. There's eight points right there because they took two field goals. So they all have big days. They run for 150, which is a whole other conversation with the Green Bay Packers and not being able to stop the run. Although 73 yards of that is Justin Herbert on the scramble. Our rush lanes aren't disciplined. One of the big runs you see, we could have had something there. But you only manage 20, and it's like – the here's the, here's the takeaway, guys. I, and I don't know if this is right to think about it this way or not. We praise the Pittsburgh Steelers for giving up 370 some yards on defense, but also being a, a team that only gives up, you know, 17, 18 points. I don't know what they are right now, but that's, you know, that's kind of the, the theme for them the last couple of years is like, okay, we'll get, we'll let you go up and down the field. We're not giving up points. The Packers are doing pretty good. You know, you look at the last couple, you know, last month, last five games, Nobody's dropping 35 on us. Nobody's dropping 30 on us. And yeah, we're giving there's time of possession issues. I mean, when you give up 150 yard rushing, it's a big deal. I'm not going to minimize that. But these they're putting you in a position to win. You know, traditionally in, in Green Bay, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this way. And I can't say this, like, I don't know what they were giving up. But in the best teams I played with in Green Bay, if you're going to tell me defense has given up 17, 18 points a game, I said, we're going to win every game, you know? Because we're going to drop, we're going to average 23, 24, 25 points a game. And so they're not perfect. And they do a lot of things that are head scratching, but they're playing pretty good against, they're playing pretty good against teams that, again, that are kind of giving you some stuff. And we're, we're down. Uh, a lot of people in the secondary through trades, injuries, the whole thing. Rasul Douglas, I see him getting a pick yesterday. Go, oh, great. Fantastic. But you start to see some of the personalities continue to develop on both sides of the football. 
And you know, listen. Anytime you get a win, you're just you start pulling some positives out of there. Where sometimes when we we take the we take the L, you know, we can sit here and try to be positive, but really you you start going, man, you really got to fix this and that. I think yesterday was one of those games where I could sit here and pick apart a lot of stuff on this team, but you choose not to, and you look at the bright side and go, listen, you could be in the Chargers situation, who has more talent than I don't know seventy percent of the league has talent at the most important positions and has a coach who's after the game inexplicably. I, I thought he was going to cry, get after the, the media for asking a, you know, listen, I'm usually on the coaches and the player side, pretty fair question. Are you going to keep calling the plays? Cause your defense is bad. And then doubling down and saying prep, everything they're doing is right. <laughs> like could be that guy. Let's watch some film. This is a fun game to watch. We're going to be in chronological order here, as you can imagine, because there we are. Because that's all I had uh, available to me at the time. So we start off the game with easy completions. This is what I'm talking about. Dialing up zone defense. Second level linebacker takes the flat. Hey, just flash. Give it to your guy. First down, easy play. You love that. Decisive throws. He's made a decision already. I know where I'm going with the ball based on the safety. They're in man coverage over there on the left. And I'm just going to take it. It's a timing throw. I feel good about it. I feel like my player is going to make the play. Eight yards. I, I want to reiterate this. Eight yards, no new yards after catch. That's fine. Now, here's the biggest thing. It wasn't a running back. But do we get a screen game that worked? Look at this. Perfect job of setting this up. And here's why. We'll go back. This stuff only works if you if you know as an offensive lineman, if you know who you got to pick up. Okay? Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not. If you can tell it's man coverage early and that guy's sitting on there, you have to get up a little bit faster because you know he's going to dial up that tight end. When you take a tight end screen versus a running back screen, when you have a tight end that's chipping out, those guys usually stay off. And they're either mugged up or they're off. Whether they're in their man or zone, it really doesn't matter. So you get this extra, I don't know, it looks like probably two yards of vertical of distance. And that allows these guys to get out. And now we got kind of a two-on-one with these blocks. Run through, first down. Great way to start. This is a great way to start the game. Again, you're getting momentum, and it feels like we'll get to this in a sec. So here's Bosa. I don't know what happened. Man, it's tough. I'm a big fan of his, man. He's a real pro. Love this about love early on in, in, in the game. You're just trusting your checkdowns, okay? So we got a second and 10. They're playing. You see all the space they're giving up, but... Look at the matchup. This is a matchup you want. 250-pound A.J. Dillon, five-yard head of steam, got to run through a linebacker and a DB. Like, we'll take it, right? Now, he's not always going to get the first down here. But you get to third and one, and then we start with – and it seems like – listen, it seems like every series in uh, in the last month, and I'm sure this isn't true, but it's like you get to the 50-yard line, you fizzle out. And without, you know, this is the most, this team, like this is the most Packers thing they could have done. Let's fake the tush push or whatever you call it. Let's fake the quarterback sneak and do a handoff where you're running horizontal instead of vertical. I just... <laughs> I just can't. You know what I mean? It's like you watch, you watch, you go, oh, they're finally figuring it out. We're going to, we're going to, everybody else is trying to do this tush push thing or the, you know, the rugby scrum, which it really is not a rugby scrum. I played four years of rugby. It's not a rugby scrum, but they're finally going to start doing that until the, you know, Goodell and the rest of the guys make it, make it. Uh, uh, I know we had the penalties a couple of weeks ago, so they, they set up for it. I shouldn't be saying that, but we're, we're finally going to, get this first down, get past the 50, go for it. And we go for the horizontal run out of a three-point stance. And then we go play action pass. 
Now, these plays feel like they should have been flipped. I don't feel we should ever run the other one. But this could have been your third down play because you still have like a run pass option. So we go under center. We go with the with the play action pass on fourth down, and we're throwing out to the flat horizontal. He's not in a position to even get the first down unless he turns and runs for two more yards. And the worst tackler on the team last week takes Musgrave out. And you're giving the ball to a guy who's not going to break a tackle. And that's not a dig on Musgrave. He's just not going to, he's not going to break that tackle going, running away from the quarterback horizontal. This is the kind of stuff where you go, you just saw they threw a check down, you know, uh, excuse me. They, they threw an eight yard. They threw a stick up top. They threw a comeback. It's like, Sometimes we outthink ourselves. I'm talking about the entire National Football League. It's almost impossible for a defensive back. You, you go five wide right there. You go even if you go four, put leave the leave the running back in. Even if you wanted to, under center play action takes time. So you've got all you just got a lot of stuff going on with a fourth and one. It's like you need two yards. Slant, stick, air. You know, there's text. I mean, there's you know, choice routes. It, there's just things you can run right here that aren't running away from the quarterback. That's all I'm trying to say. Difficult. I love the physicality that I think Nixon, this is Nixon, brings to Keenan Allen right here. That's how you deal with kind of the outside, the screen game, outside toss. Devondre Campbell makes the play, but really Nixon makes the play by just standing the wide receiver up. So the running back, Austin Eckler, you want to make him cut in the backfield. He's still effective, but he's not nearly as effective. Great job by Nixon. Two hands in his chest. Jugs machine Monday. There's so many things that the Chargers are going to be thinking about this week. Number one is, I guarantee every one of those wide receivers is going on the Jugs machine today. They got back late last night. Get up, get their coffee, go over. Take 100 balls on the jugs machine, man, because fourth and four, there ain't nobody around. Drop. I think it's a tight end. Drop. You know. Now, you can't make this. This is what I'm talking about as far as game playing and with the Green Bay Packers. You can't make this any easier for the tight ends now, okay? So, Bosa's out. You got Mac on one side, 45 on the other. Now, you're leading with your tight end crafts on the line of scrimmage. And now Musgrave's going to be coming in motion, and they're going to slip double on the move this defensive end to, to, a, to an outside player. This You can't make this any better. Like, this is, for, for the quality of blockers that they are right now, this is the, the best scenario. You got a guy coming from motion. You got a guy head up. They're both getting to kind of get a running start. You got to be able to execute this. We saw this last week with the Detroit Lions, and the difference is in attention to detail. The difference is in attention to detail about how they go about their business as far as angles, footwork, hips, body position, et cetera. Because they're, the Detroit Lions, or excuse me, the uh, the Chargers are going to see this for the rest of the year. And every team in the National Football League is starting to replicate the things that the Niners have been doing for for at least two years, right? And this is one of them. Maybe not with two tight ends, maybe with Juszczyk and Kittle, but you get the, you get the picture. But they just get uh, shrugged off here. And, you know, unfortunately, that's Ben Sims. Sorry, that's not uh, Musgrave. But they get shrugged off, and he ends up making the play. And it's just that can't – that that those kind of things just cannot happen if you want to continue to grow. Now, Preston Smith. This is insulting that they would put this tight end on a stretch play to Preston Smith. Are you kidding me? I mean, Preston Smith's playing patty cake with this guy. All day long. Two hands in his chest, playing on their side of the line of scrimmage. Right? I mean, this is exactly... Listen, this guy just keeps showing up for you. Some people, he doesn't have the stats and blah, blah, blah. This guy just keeps showing up. Look, he doesn't even care. He just gets up. No one's even celebrate. Right? First and 10. They get two. Nobody even cares. Because it's like, what do you expect me to do? You just put Parnum Jr. on me. I love it. You commit a lot to the line of scrimmage here. You got Devondre Campbell on the end there. It, it, they tried a couple different things. I thought this was interesting. Um, 
I like when they go 5-1 out of nickel. I love it. They've got Preston and Rashawn Gary on the left side over here. Slightly confusing. But what I love here, the reason they're doing it is because it allows everybody to be a single block. Every player now is single block. You're not going to get any doubles. We talked about it in the preview show. The one thing that San Diego, uh, the, gee, I'm going to say San Diego 10 times today, but it's LA Chargers do well, especially on the left side of their line, is they do a great job of, of double teams. They get vertical. They can get movement. So singling these guys up really is going to give us opportunities for that first wave of defense to make some plays, and they did. Wyatt has a great play right here. You'd love to see that. We walk up. They read middle linebacker, take what they can give them. These kind of plays, this is what a good offense is going to do. Like, you're, you can't always be right. So this kind of stuff you can you can definitely live with. They featured the tight end early in the game, but they're, they're taking, oh, did we talk about Lucas Van Ness in a three-point stance? Did we talk about their entire team in a three-point stance? For months since the draft with this kid, Lucas Van Ness gets in a three-point stance. Watch this. Takes out the end, takes out the second end, takes out the lead block, stops him before the first down on the second and short. Okay, you want to talk about how to build out a player. Put him in a position where he can do that because the kid in a three-point stance in college could do that all day long, right? You put him in a two-point, you do all this, okay, blah, 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 blah. Help the kid out. Not rocket science. This is a great job by the defensive staff giving him a chance to play with more leverage, kind of with your ears pinned back. He's not going to be a great pass rusher now. I don't know if he ever becomes a great pass rusher. But he's strong. He's explosive. And he plays with extended arms. You just got to put him in a position to get there before, before the, the offensive lineman or the, or the tight end. Putting him in a three-point makes him more aggressive, makes him play with better leverage. Love it. Okay, everyone's going to get angry about this stuff. So you're looking at a third and one. They go bunch formation, so Preston's got to be outside of the widest guy. Why? Because if they pin him and they run and they just run a toss, the only player out there is the uh, is the cornerback, and they're just going to lead on him with one of those three players from the bunch. Okay, so this is something just by scheme. This is what the Chargers they're doing this for a reason. Now you can extend out your your defense over there, but the leverage player who's playing with outside leverage on the line of scrimmage has to have leverage on that bunch because the bunch is it's such a, it's we call it a nasty it's such a tight split. Now I think this is Wyatt who really does a great job of penetrating here, takes on I think that's the left tackle or the tight end pushes him back into the past the line of scrimmage. We're playing on their side of the line of scrimmage. We got to play here. Preston ducks his head in there, tries to make this tackle, and ends up getting logged, and then Eckler goes down the side. This is what Austin Eckler does. This is why he's so good. He turns one of these, like, no-gain plays, third and one, no gain, into a long deal. Yeah, we got to be better. There's no question about it. But from a schematic standpoint, you know, you sit there and you got, I got the, lay, I got the edge. You just can't, you can't peek your nose in there. You got to keep that outside hand free. Easy to say, tough to do. Talk about it. As good as Keenan Allen is, he had a bad day yesterday. He had 115 yards and a touchdown's bad day, Mike. Yeah, it's a bad day when you should have had three touchdowns. You know, drops that one. As bad day to have a bad day. And I look under center play action pass. So they score three points. We go under center play action. You can't dial this up any better. You know, a lot of I haven't always been a, the the biggest advocate of the way that they use certain personnel on offense, given their experience levels in, in football IQ. I'll say it again. I, I thought they called a, a, a masterful game sheet uh, for this play or for this game. They, they called a wonderful game. Can't dial this play up. Under center play action. Takes the shot. Has has the win. I mean, he's beat. We got everything we want. You just got to make this play. And we just can't connect on it yet. 
That's just a fact of life. I love this. This is one of the long, this is one of the explosive rubs from a non running back. So I, you don't love that the running backs aren't getting, uh, aren't, aren't getting off, but you do love to see this. I think this is Reed getting the ball on the round. We have numbers. You got four defenders in the box. I'm going to take out, so take out Jenkins and the, and the three technique. I was going to assume he can make that block. But because AJ Dillon's added to this, you really are with a speed motion that Jaden Reed's going to provide, you're really five on four because you got four blockers already. And so you got one guy that can't be accounted for. That's the guy with the ball. So again, these are really smart play calls that are using speed, just like the Miami Dolphins do that everybody celebrates with Tyreek Hill. When you it's not it's one thing to go across the ball in motion because you can see a lot of stuff. Are they playing zone? Are they playing man? How are they going to rotate, etc.? It's a whole other thing to do it at full speed. Because now the reaction, the communication time is gone, right? And just even if I like if you get a fast guy and he starts running away from you, by the time you figure out what the hell's going on, he's 10 yards down the block. And even if you're a fast guy, you're still starting 10 yards behind. I mean, it's tough. Now John Runyon's out, Sean Ryan's in, this whole deal. This is a PAP, a Palms Up Play of the Year candidate, okay? Because we come in here, and now we got Josh Myers and Sean Ryan both pulling out to the left and just leaving the defensive tackle to go and hit the quarterback. And I'm going to be honest with you, and I can't prove this, I don't think Sean Ryan was wrong here. I watched this three times. I'm thinking, I think probably Josh Myers is supposed to block back. Unless it's a three technique. I, I don't know. You would think the center would have the right call here and, 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 and Ryan would be the one who's doing it wrong. But regardless, these are plays you just can't have, right? It's That's a communication. That's like a self-enforced error, right? Yeah, third and 11, I put this down, or third and 10. I love that. I'm circling the third and 10 because where are the chargers at the sticks? We got two check downs. And this is, again, why I think this is a great job from a play calling standpoint. These guys are going to play soft zone on third and 10, and they're not even going to have a guy at the sticks. And now you got a 250-pound running back. Like, same situation as before. He just catches it five yards deeper. Gets 15 yards first down. Go to the second quarter here. On the end around, we saw earlier how the defensive end, Khalil Mack, was playing when we had the tight end step to him and we had the motion man. And we've seen on tape that they want to face or wrong shoulder when you come down, when you down block. And then you send a guy across the ball to block you, to like a, a guard pull or this tight end on split flow look. They want to come down and either wrong arm, wrong shoulder you or they want to face you. Once you see that, and he's a backup, they run the around to Reed. 45 gets caught. Musgrave gets really a two for one because you can you Olay on 45. First big play of the game. Explosive play, touchdown. Taking tape and applying it to the game plan is what every staff does. It's great to see it when it's executed the right way and it works out like this. Really glad this one. So really glad this works. So we spike here. Got Van Ness again in a three-point stance, which, by the way, I love. We spike underneath. Carl Brooks beats the right guard. And notice, Carl, notice the... Uh, the stance. He's going for it. Like he's pass rushing right now. There's this isn't, we're not reading out. He knows exactly what the score is. I don't know how the guard gets beat on that move. Um, I love the footwork though, because he steps out, makes him reach a little bit further than he's willing to go. So Van Ness rips inside. They they're running a, an ET with Slayton, but he never gets over. So he has escape, uh, he has a place to escape. So it works out. Carl Brooks with, I don't know if that's his, it's not his first sack, but one of his early ones. Great job. Now, this is something as a pass, as a running defense, excuse me, that we got to fix. 
So you love the aggressive style of play from the linebackers as far as being able to fill the hole, right? We, we kind of celebrate, man. We really want guys to start. Let's have fights on their side of the line of scrimmage. We've seen it already. Success. Obviously, when, when Preston tucked his nose in and he got his outside hand clamped up, Austin Eckler takes it out, outside for 30. Not a great play, but just the way that we're playing ball on their side of the line of scrimmage, I want to celebrate, okay? Because I think that's the, that's the style – that is going to, you're going to find more success because that's usually the, the personality of the players you have. So we get some downhill motion here uh, from, from Campbell, but you look at the backside and they just get completely wiped out. And so backside run, you've got your beat off the ball. You've got vertical push. And now you just get, you know, it's a free eight yards. And so this is kind of the theme. If you're going to be aggressive on the front side, you have to win across the face. You have to hold your gap in the backside. It's that easy. You have to be able to do it. Somebody on the backside, defensive tackle, defensive end, linebacker, safety cover, someone has to be there for the cutback. Because if you if you make the running back cut uh, uh, behind the line of scrimmage and stop his momentum, because that's like that play is a – I'm going right. Nope. I'm going all the way back left. That's not like a one cut downhill like Terrell Davis in the Broncos. That's not an Alex Gibbs zone scheme. That's I'm going all the way back. You can't be able to do that and still get eight yards because there's nobody home. This is a touchdown. And my whole point to this is we just blew coverage on the top. So there's no safety behind there. If, if he wants to throw up to the green circle, there's nobody on him. Two Packers guard, one player there, just 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 to the left him on the screen. Pick one, you know. This turns out poorly because my man here, third string tight end, just kind of just kind of dog walks our safety, but it happens. Okay, we're under center, under center play action. At time here, it's a he holds the ball for five seconds. And I'm going to show this from a different angle. So we give up the sacks. John Rennie Jr. Everyone hates you. Uh, John Rennie Jr. Uh, should we put in John Rennie? Okay. This is the Miyagi blocking philosophy, okay? And here's what I'm saying. You, ever, you guys remember a Karate Kid? And he goes to Daniel's side. He gives him, remember, he gives him the headband or the bandana. And he says, Karate down left side of road, good. Down right side of road, good. Down the middle, squish like grape, right? If you're going to go under center play action and you want to take all that time it's either we're going to sell the run. We're either going to sell the run or we're going to do something other than under center play action. But if we're going to do under center play action where we're doing the fake handoff or we're dropping back seven steps or we're coming up, we're pumping. It's a four second route, a five second route. We got double moves and you want me to just pass. This is philosophically it's there's no excuse for losing but this makes it that much more difficult because they want me to sell run and i got half the team in in race in uh two-point stances and nobody here thinks this is a run so the guys are coming off the ball you want to be able to actually sell this 51's looking like an all pro yesterday i think he had two sacks with a sack fumble on one of them and look I'm not saying this is one of those deals. If the ball's gone, if he doesn't stand way back there, if he steps up right now, there's so many situations. This is the tough part about playing offensive line. I'm not, again, I'm not making excuses. You get beat, you get beat. But there's so many things that can happen here where he, nobody even notices this play. And that's, I mean, it's just how it goes. And who's got the toughest block here, really? If you think about it, the right guard. Why? Because he's backside of the play action and he doesn't know whether to run sell. He doesn't have a double team. It's the guy's got outside leverage. Ah, gives him cold sweats. So love, look, flip the hips. We saw Herbert do this literally last week. And I just, you know, you had the, hey, can he run to the left, flip the hips, throw a dime, check, check, check. Love does the exact same thing. Fantastic play. Just making things happen. Just now, this is a tough look. We go under center play action again. And they want to pop the center back. But to pop the center back, 
the backside tight end wide receiver, someone's got to slow down Mac. Okay. You can't like, he's got to actually stop momentum. You got to hit him. You got to do something because they want Myers to step to his right, slam into the defensive tackle and then get back out here and try to get Mac. And it's just, there is no way that's going to happen if you don't take anything off the rush. So again, a lot of teams use that and use it effectively, but the person has to execute. And that is, and let me say this, that isn't a play where I'm sitting there asking a wide receiver or a tight end to put his hands on Khalil Mack and pass block him. We're asking him to put his, put his entire body in front of Mack's entire body and just slow him down for two steps or make him loop out or do anything so that Myers has time to get back. So some of this stuff, it looks bad for a certain person that, you know, or, or a certain group, not true. You'd love to see this. Quay Walker, downhill. Quay Walker, downhill, taking on that tight end. Playing on their side of the line of scrimmage. Campbell cleaning that up. I just love it. That's That's the kind of ball... That's the kind of ball you want to see. That's the kind of stuff that gets you excited because it's like, I know we gave up 150 and I know the quarterback had 73 of those. And I know Austin Eckler had a, you know, had that big run. I know, I know, I know, but you see from a behavior standpoint, you hope that we're going to kind of latch on to some of these behaviors and start to make changes. I would take the lead. So we've got, Tight end, we got a, a tight end in the backfield. It looks like that pony look, but it's really, I think that's uh, either Kraft or Musgrave. So we got the lead. You see they log, like we just talked about. They close down. The defensive end closes down, so we log them. We lead up through. And this makes it so the tight end out of the backfield, he doesn't have to kill anybody. He's not leading on a defensive end now. He's leading on a linebacker. Number nine is not the most physical human on the planet as per yesterday's game. Kenneth Murray Jr., first-round draft pick in 2020, is not the most physical human on the planet. Lead through, first down. Not a big play, but, you know, it's a, it's a second and three. You need to get that first. My point to everybody is these schemes will help those tight ends. It used to be all those tight ends had to always go backside and do this. Now we're putting them play side. We haven't even run the split foot with the guy backside all game. Right, you still have that in your pocket. They probably took it out because they were tired of running it. But now you're you're leading with these guys who, it you know, in a three point stance, D end on tight end, is a complete mismatch. Right, is a is a is an eyesore. But now you start putting them in these positions, and they get better at it. Now you have an all inclusive running game out of this personnel group. Right here, you love to see. Now, when you're running these kind of routes, these comeback routes right in the middle of the field, you're doing it by yardage or you're doing it by cycles. Like, hey, I'm going to take seven right, like on my seventh step, my left foot, that's what I'm breaking down. But you see right now, as the Chargers play match, as soon as he changes, flips his hips and starts running, as soon as that happens, you see the breakdown and you just see the speed and separation. <laughs> just speed and separation here. By Jaden Reed, phenomenal job. That's why those two yesterday, you know, Wicks and Jaden Reed, other guys had made plays. Dobbs had touchdowns. Uh, Crystal Watch had a touchdown. These guys kind of stood out because it's like their small space movement is really good. Multiple options. So we're sh we just showed we just showed the where are we here? Here we go. So we got the lead with the guard pull, and this is an RPO. So we just showed a very similar play, same look. You're bringing the tight end in motion. They decide to bring the slot. And so now we process this with pre-snap indicator, okay? Jordan makes the decision, instead of running the lead, which is there, he throws it out for a wide receiver screen. This kid makes two miss, gets 15. That's fantastic. That's a fantastic job. 
this is the power of, you know, being able to have all those good athletes on the field at the same time, particularly with those tight ends, if they can be a viable option in the running game. Now, let me go back and explain <laughs> this screen. So the screen game has just struggled and, and everybody blames the offensive line. Right now, <clears throat> Offensive line is going to not the not the uh, linebacker in the circle, but the linebacker to the to the the bottom of him on the uh, hash mark on the on the eight yard line, seven yard line. The running back AJ Dillon gets a little bit excited here, goes right by the blitzing linebacker. Could have butted up, could have done any number of things, and now he's ahead of the lineman. The linemen are going on time like they're supposed to. There's not a jailbreak call for a screen because the linebacker blitzes, man. So the running back's just got to butt him out. Yeah, maybe you heated it up a little bit. But now he's ahead of everyone. So this guy comes in and makes the play. It's a timing. It's a practice thing. You got to see that in practice. I would, you know, you wonder if they've seen that look in practice. Well, okay, we're going to bring the linebacker this time. What's that going to look like? Because the other option always for the, for the, in the Green Bay Packers offense there's always a route or there should always be a route shallow cross usually was, was, was with us like 72 X shallow cross screen, left screen, right. If they're going to bring that guy, that pocket that's vacated, you just throw, you just throw the ball out right now. So they might not have that option. I need to, I didn't watch that play again, but that's something you would think about. So we just go for the field goal. And the problem with this play is, and this is what has to stop. You got two single blocks on a pull play. Okay. So their left side, two first round draft picks. Fair enough. And really, would you think about the outside play here by a Slater? Like, press whoever that is, I think that's Presser, but he's just doing his job, right? You're not, as long as you don't get wide. But the guard inside can't pin that D tackle. And then it looks like Campbell doesn't know what's happening. And he just kind of gets surprised. So there's just a, you know, cacophony of errors here. You got to come down and play this super tight. You got to play tight to that guard. You got to wrong shoulder this guy and just be able to deliver a blow. And then on the backside with Quay, that center goes right up to him. Got to be able to play over the top. Center gets two hands inside. Will Clap, you know, the guy that I, I wanted to pick on, gets up and secures the second level. No bueno. This is a really good play. You know, he's talking about the, you know, the, new, uh, the new NFL, the new, the new offenses and the things that they can do. This is just a really smart play. So, you know, they know Rashawn Gary. They're reading Rashawn Gary here. So if he's going to take the dive, he's going to keep the ball. But instead of running it, if the DBs play off, they're running a wide receiver screen or a little tunnel screen. Keenan Allen lead block. They give it to Quentin uh, Johnson. And he's a speedster, man. That's why I picked him up from TCU. He gets 12. I mean, that's, that's just a really smart play. And it starts becoming like, you know, it starts becoming just a, a numbers game with everything in the in the National Football League. And I, you know, it probably won't be too long until every single play looks something like that, or at least, you know, 50% of them. Details matter. Here's what we're talking about. This is the big run from Herbert. And they run a TT inside, okay? Right here, you got to come straight up. You're on the hash. Come straight up, but you don't. You go outside the hash. You can take this guy down the middle. And he runs right by him. And you just go, if you know, if you watched it live, you're going, how is that even physically possible? And he's an elusive guy and he's really athletic and all of this stuff. But come on, that's tough. And we got another one here. Wisconsin Sunshine, man. Fat kid doing sit-ups. I'm talking about there's no payoff for Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert's feeling like a fat kid doing sit-ups right now. All that work to get down there, man, no payoff. I hit the guy right in the numbers. He drops the ball in the end zone. Tough. Tough sled. And that guy's unbelievable player. He just had one of those days. I think the sun was in his eyes. Just tough. This play could have been worse. This was a flea flicker, I think, coming out of the, out of the gate. They get the ball back here. And they're running. You can tell by these... Well, first of all, the offensive line is doing some sort of pass pro. They're not run selling. I, 
there's a there's a disconnect a little bit between some of this play action stuff and the flea flickers and then what we're doing from an offensive line standpoint. Like not, some people need to sell. You understand the backside tackles maybe not going to sell, but anyways, they hand the ball off. I think they're running a flea flicker here. You see these two guys are coming down doing nothing. They're ready to get rolling. And this could have been a lot worse. This could have been one of those fumble plays. You go, good Lord, do we need to come out and do that? Poise under pressure with Jordan Love. This is the stuff you see the growth and development. Got a guy in his face, takes the outright. They have trips up top. They got man defense, single high safety. And they just basically run a little rub up top between the slot defender and the inside slot defender. He runs a 10 yard out. Now, John Runyon Jr. takes a wide set, and Myers is already going to the left. So because Myers has the nose tackle, nose tackle crosses his face, he goes to the left. They're opening up that space. They want to pick on John Runyon Jr. He takes a wide set, gets beat inside in the A-gap. He's beat here. Love stands in. He's about to get walloped, makes a great throw for a first down to Musgrave. Hey, downhill, like snowball getting downhill, man, getting momentum, okay? And we're just kind of hit and miss on the stuff for the tight ends. Right? Same thing. Slip look. Two guys over there. Blocking one. And we just kind of just kind of get beat. And it, it, Max a great player. But it's not always the play calling. Put, these guys are in great situations to be successful. Great situations to be successful. And sometimes you're going to get beat individually. But... I just would posit this. If you can clean up all the times you have a double team that doesn't work out well, you're going to be 50% better. Whatever, you know, you're going to be that much more efficient because we miss a lot of the double team stuff. And I think that's what's frustrating. Processing speed getting better. Up top, Yash Nyman, for whatever reason, decides he's going to switch responsibilities with a running back and he's going to block the small guy and let the running back block the big guy. I don't know why he does it. Running back doesn't know why he does it either, but he does. AJ comes back, just gets enough on him, but just a quick same route as the first play in the game. Get open, get down and get your nose down. He'll get 10 yards. It's just a great job of going. I'm getting heated up, you know, poison under pressure part two. Process this, get the ball out, make the easy play. Now, this is a hard thing. You got a double move on the bottom, right? So he's running the Dino route, double move. You look up top, we got the one stick. The other two aren't even looking. And they brought heat off the edge. And AJ's meeting him pretty deep in the pocket. And Yash is already at the top of his route. So if he doesn't step up, or top of his uh, drop, so if he doesn't step up, he's yeah, he's going to take the sack. And so there you have to have pre-snap. You're running a deep developing route. This is where, you know, you go maybe, this is maybe where we're doing the play action, understanding everyone's going to do a full run sell, we do a full slide with the, with, the, with the tight end and the running back to the other side, and they take the defensive end. Like there's other ways to do this necessarily if – you don't feel good about your pass protection. Like I don't feel necessarily very good about, you know, our left tackle versus whoever the, the premier right defensive end is on their team. Love the play speed for Manny Barry here. This guard is sizing up. Look how tall the guard is. I mean, you look at our, the other side. If, if we see this, we're going, good Lord, why are you going to, are you walking into him? What are you going to block him with your stomach? But Manny Barry does a great job here. Just taking, hey, if you're not going to block me, I'm just going to run over and make the play. Really, really athletic move or tackle for loss. This is a big-time play. Big-time play. This is a game plan win. And I know this could have been his first touchdown, and that whole thing was kind of funny and sad. and you know. But they have leverage here. So number nine, first-rounder, has they're, they're in man coverage. So he has to get out there. And it's just a really easy win. For fourth down play that we had earlier, you go, well, you could have ran this. Now you're running away, but you see that you already have won with leverage. Gets down. Really like, you know, hey, listen, love that he tries this, honestly. Everyone thinks he's going to lower his shoulders, trying to be a little high stepper. Got no problem with it. 
this is the kind of stuff we got to fix, right? Talking about Jordan Love. Hey, give him a chance to be successful by not making him face the other way when he's getting the tunnel screen. Okay, now you're giving, too, you're giving all the guys too many uh, opportunities to get back. Those are the easy, those are the really easy plays, right? Let's take care of the really easy stuff. Motion destroys leverage. Why do I say that? You just see how the they all widen as we get the motion man coming over. And we saw this play last year versus Dallas when he had his, I think he had three touchdowns in that game. But he's just basically saying, listen, I don't care if safety's got slight inside leverage on me or, or my man's got now four yards of outside leverage on me. I'm running away from both of you and it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah, the only guy that can make that play is the backside corner if he sloughs off. That's it. Great throw, great route. Pass rush from my man, Preston Smith. Nobody else. We go high here. I'm going to show you this. Where is like where is the pass rush? Now, Sean Gary decides to go inside because the, the, the right tackle goes uh, sets out flat. Preston gets chipped out, so he's just trying to take that high line now, so he goes to the bull to the, uh, the outside rip. But inside, we're all gummed up. This is a long developing play. This is a crosser route with Keenan Allen. He's at the top of numbers when we start. It's all the way across. These are tough for the defense. I don't care, you know, what coverage you're playing. It's just really hard to cover a guy that talented for that long. Got to make that quarterback get off his timing. And this is why, again, I go back and go, why are we not? We have nobody on their center. Their center just gets to be a help defender here. He doesn't have to block anybody. He's just helping along. Look, look at that. He's just, he's happy. He's the, he's their fish. He's their weak link. Like put somebody on, you know, cover up the middle three, leave Slater alone if you want. But this is the, these are the opportunities, in my opinion, that you have. I know that philosophically they might not want to play that kind of defense because they don't want to leave too many guys uh, rushing the passer for a quarterback like Herbert and a, and a receiver like Keenan Allen. I understand that. It's just it's tough sometimes. So the safeties are deep. We get that crack block that we were talking about in the running game. And Dobbs, listen, what everybody needs to understand here is, and I, they're running another one of those uh, those lead plays. So we look, this is the tight end lead with the guard pull. Now they've ran, you see up top, they're running the wide receiver screen. It's the same look, okay? This is, you can run the play over and over again because it's always going to give a different wrinkle. And it gives that tight end in particular a, a chance to be successful. I think that's the big thing here. They screw this up. Tight end and the guard do a terrible job here. It doesn't matter because of the the way the insert points for both guys. It's really difficult for the defense to figure this out. Nine gets overly aggressive. Running back runs right by him. And then Dobbs, all Dobbs is doing here, he's not killing anybody, right? But we could cut outside, and he guarantees you're going to get five yards. Even if they tackle and drop him right there, you guarantee he's going to have a five-yard gain. And that's all you're looking for. Those safeties playing deep make a big difference. Now, here's what Love did best, in my opinion, this game. Take what you can get. Look how it's just simple throw. You got five wide, right? Everybody's out. Scat protection. You're at the sticks. It's third and four. Simple, simple, simple. Love it. Now, this is that mush face emoji, this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got under center, play action. You got a five-man rush, linebackers figured out what to do, and all of a sudden, you just go Musgraves at the bottom, and he is wide ass open. And listen, we know there's people down there, like on the left of the screen, but it ain't for a while. He's probably got one guy he's got to beat by himself. That's tough. And those are the plays. You, you start looking at the score, and you start doing like mental gymnastics and going – I think both teams look at this at this game and go, man, we should have had 30. Preston and KC doing work. I want to highlight Preston here. St this Rashawn Slater wasn't playing high level at the beginning of the season. He was hurt last year. He came in as he was better than Panay Sewell when he came in. Panay's better now because this guy got hurt. But he, he I think ACL. This guy's unbelievable. Okay. We got the inside stab, chop the arm down rip through big time play and now we get somebody on the center 
go back. I want to show both these guys win. First, you got to watch this again. It's part of the uh, resilience phase of the program. Now you watch KC. He goes with that two-hand grab, pull through, arm, arm over, or just rip through here. And look, the center's on the ground. Guys, we talked about it last week. He is a fish. Why did you not put him on? Why did you not put KC on in the entire game? So we get the win. And then we get Preston on him. They throw the ball away. I love it. I love it. Preston gets no credit for that. Maybe he gets a pressure from PFF or something, right? But goodness, great rushes by both those guys. Second and nine. Third string. Uh, this is the uh, this is Stone Smart, the third string tight end. Now he drops a touchdown. And I know he already scored, but he drops a touchdown, takes one in right in the face. And then you got to be thinking like, man, I might just start walking home. Because I think that was the fifth drop of the of the night. Right? And you're the third string tight end, and you just dropped a go-ahead. But luckily, next play, luckily for them, I guess, Herbert's got an absolute cannon. He's got a guy in his face. He throws it into four defenders where only Keenan Allen puts it right on, can catch it, puts it right on his numbers. I mean, this is just... This is an absurd throw. Now, <laughs> this is the worst celebration since Javon Walker. Is that you, Javon? Javon Walker used to have some of the worst celebrations I've ever seen. I got him one night. I go, why do you do that? And he goes, hey, listen, you just, you block. I'll catch the touchdowns. And if I catch him, you let me do what I want to do. I said, fair enough. But it's terrible. Watch this throw. You know, you sit with the defense. And if you're the defense, you go, I don't know. Palms up, man. What do you want me to do? Like, there's four dudes right there. I mean, any the velocity of the ball alone, you just and the placement is just he's he's really good. This seems impossible. What do I mean? Josh Myers and John Running Jr. and it, and it was Josh Myers and Sean Ryan earlier. There's a theme of you know. Josh Myers and John. It looks like Josh Myers is going to the left and John Runyon Jr. is, is I'll back this up so we make it obvious. It looks like Josh is looking on the, where the arrow is to the left and John Runyon Jr. is looking at the green circled linebacker. And it seems impossible that at this stage in the game in the fourth quarter, uh, second and nine, Four and a half minutes to go. You're down. You're down four, and you need to win. It seems impossible that you guys that, that they would be on a different page. But one of them's setting to the left. One of them's like doing a, what we call a rig and right guard in. Puts his left hand here and looks out. And they let fifty one come through and get a hit on the quarterback. And that could very well be game. That could be quarterback injured game. That could be sack fumble. Recovered by the other team game, game over. That's it. And it's a communication problem. And you go, it when you get up to the line of scrimmage, the center, the somebody's up there. It's the center. Well, it's Mike Flanagan for me. Gets up there and makes the call. And that's where we're going. It's not like it's not like he whispers it over here. Like he's telling everybody, hey, we're going to that guy. So I don't understand how this is possible unless there's just no communication. I don't understand. This makes of all the things that happened yesterday, this makes the least sense. That's not a physical defeat. That is a mental, just absolutely dumpster fire. Is this kid I'm playing in fast forward right now? Watch this. Just watch this tail. I didn't do anything here. And he's just gonzo, man. See the fast skin on the team? Okay. This is the touchdown. And I, this is a reminder to everybody. Don't ask Brandon Staley about the play calling responsibilities, okay? Because they're not even covering Romeo Dobbs. No, because that's not Romeo Dobbs. Sorry, they're not even covering the outside wide receiver. They're having a they're over here having a damn conference call about who who should get out on the on the on the on the wide out on the double double side. Is that AJ? Because it's a linebacker trying to get out to AJ. 
they run into each other, not run into each other, but rub each other at the at the uh fourteen yard line. And Dobbs is wide open. This isn't even a great throw. It's not a bad throw, but it's not even a great throw. It's a contested catch if he's not four yards off him. And you just go, Oh, I mean, it's it's like these are all pros, so they should, you know, it's like you should know better, but it's like if it keeps happening, you have to start asking yourself why. But who cares? Great win for Dobbs. Now, everybody who uh, played the – who's the Packers defensive MVP game last night? Congratulations to about a third of you who were smart enough to figure out the most obvious answer, which is, of course, Preston Smith. Beats uh, Slater again with a great rip, leverage, and Rashawn Gary ends up getting the play here, but we know who made the play. And that's why he's our MVP, because he might not lead the team in sacks. The guy's a, a demon in the run game and has been his has pressured quarterbacks this year at, at what I think is a pretty good clip, especially given past you know prior seasons. Like he's not a pass rush specialist. I've said this on the program before, but he is playing high level. And he just shows up every game, man. He's just, I'm just a big fan of his and, and, and what he's been able to do. Now, here's today's MVP. Quentin Johnson. That's tough. That is a tough one. He rocking the baby right there. Now, <clears throat> everybody drops balls. This kid will probably get better from this. This is the sixth drop pass by the, by the Chargers. And that's how you lose ball games. Or if you're the Packers, you win the games you're supposed to win. So with that said, let's figure out what I got wrong. I thought this would be a big day for Aaron Jones. Obviously he got hurt. Looks like the knee injury is not going to be that serious. But here's the deal. The Packers averaged only three and a half yards to carry, 3.6, despite Jaden Reed going three for 46. Now, the next guy in line for yards per carry was Emmanuel Wilson with four. And then way down there was A.J. Dillon with a 2.1. That has to change. And I like, again, we've seen that other teams can do it. And we've seen other teams have success running the plays that they, they ran yesterday. And we've seen other teams have success against a team with Joey Bosa on the field. So it's, it's not the play calling. It's like the tight, those two tight ends, and everybody says, Oh, the tight ends look great. It's because they see the catches and they go, Oh, I mean, they look so good. The tight ends got to block a little bit better if you want to, if you want a better, because you can't, you're not going to run the ball. You know, this isn't a 50 run team. You got to make the most of the opportunities, right? So if you miss, if you screw up four of those, you only get two yards on four of them. You go, you know, four, four carries, eight yards. Tough sled. Second thing I got wrong, Keenan Allen had a good day. But he dropped the third down at the two-yard line that, you know, maybe he walks in there. But it's certainly first and goal. They're probably scoring. Um, so that's seven points. You know, that's a, that's a four-point turn. And then he drops the, the shirt touchdown on his chest later in the game where the sun gets the Wisconsin sun gets in his eyes. So he has a, he has a big day with a touchdown and, you know, over 100 yards passing. But you're going, could have been bigger. Quentin Johnson drops the, the gimme TD for, for the win. And you're looking at it, you know, because that was a big matchup as those wide receivers versus our secondary. And for just being honest, Herbert, who's a might be the most insanely talented kid on uh, on a team, uh, he could have looked at he could have been looking down the road at 350 yards and, and three or four touchdowns. I mean, they just make those catches. And that's it's just a fact, right? And they, he didn't. So we you can't what if, what if, what if. But when guys are dropping balls when they're open, that's you know, you kind of gotta look at it like, all right, were we this were we lucky? Were we good? Did we pressure him? Did we, you know? Did we, so I think for me, that wasn't really a secondary issue. That was more of a we're not beating up Will Clapp at center to get down the middle to make this guy get off, get get off the spot. Like he's throwing on the spot way too many times this game. I think it was I, for me it was just too easy for him to get the ball out without having to move around. And uh, I just talked about. I just talked about. I shouldn't. I, my third thing was, you know, Preston Smith got after Slater. He is my defensive MVP for the season right now. Um, 
and you saw Kenny Clark got it for Will Clapp late. I, I just think we should have. You would like to see them look at the scheme and then also go, I want to find where's the guy that I can exploit. And that guy's put enough tape on that you, you can exploit him. So exploit him next time. Keys to victory. Let's just do a quick review. Big plays on offense uh, was, was something that we needed to do. You know, we went over 20 for the first time in a long time. Number of big plays in this game, in the running game. Uh, here's a fun fact. Brandon Staley's from the Vic Fangio tree, which prides itself on not giving up explosive plays, yet I think that's probably the most explosive plays the Packers have gotten in a long time. Fun fact. Second thing, pressure and Herbert up the middle. We talked about uh, we, we missed the mark on that one. He's a sneaky good athlete. You know, like that one run was huge. And then the third thing was make game about make the game about Aaron Jones. Wanted to get him 35, 30, 35 touches. Um, uh, you know, Reed and Wick showed their potential. I think that was the big th the big thing there. It's like, yeah, he got hurt, but some guys stepped up. The you the you stepped up and, and and had shine time in in the in the spotlight. The big takeaway today it really is for me. That Matt LaFour and this staff, I think they put together a, a, a really good game plan for this Dodgers Dar defense in particular. And I just think the execution was average. Love had a good day, no doubt, going over 300. Like, you're not – like, it's great. It's, and for the first time, it's great. I think he took a step forward. Pre-snap indicators, post-snap processing. Made some throws under duress. But we got to be better in the running game. I, I think if you take away – you know, if you start thinking, what are your areas of opportunity? You average 2.6 yards per carry if you take away the, the wide receivers running. In other words, your running backs average 2.6 yards per carry. Not good enough. Okay? Offensive line and tight ends need to do a better job. We saw communication issues in the passing game between Myers and Runyon, or Runyon Myers and Ryan. We saw communication issues and blocking issues with the tight ends. You got to be better. Love's missing a couple of those throws that you'd like to get back. You, you can, Both teams could come out of this game going, man, we could have had 30. You know, I think I said that already, but like, I think both teams are looking at it that way. Like there were some missed opportunities there given up, given how, um, I think how well Herbert throws the ball and then how many ways schematically and then just from an execution standpoint, the Chargers defense struggles. And, the 150 yards on the ground. We talk about the secondary and Herbert and all this stuff, but really it starts with your ability to gain yardage. Eckler's averaging six yards a carry, 6.4 yards per carry. Okay, and I know a lot of that's on one play, but it sets the tone for how you think about the defense. And you have to be able to win on the backside. You just have to win your one-on-ones. You see even the when they when they pulled through on the trap and the two plays at the left, left guard, left tackle, win their one-on-ones. You have to be able to win your one-on-ones in this league. That's what makes your – that's what makes the thing go. At the risk of being too long a show, I'm going to give a couple minutes to these listener questions. I spent a lot of time on tape today. Listener question number one. How do you hold your players accountable for mistakes? What options are there for a coach? Great question. So, me personally, it, the whole philosophy is this. You have to teach them how to do it first, right? You have to teach them how to do it. So I, what you what you don't want to do is you don't want to say, I can draw it up and so it's going to work, right? I'll draw it up, it works. It doesn't, it, like life doesn't work that way. You have to teach it. And I got a process that we go through to teach everything, but you have to teach it. Now, if they're not doing it, if they're not putting in the work, it's not even, a, at the pro level, it's not even a warning. If you're not putting in the work to get better, I'm going to find somebody who will. It's that easy. Because I want guys who are all in, right? You want guys who are – now, what that work like so what, and what preparation looks like is different for different people. But if, like, you're a wide receiver who drops passes and doesn't hit the jugs machine at all, I probably don't want you on my team, if that makes sense. If you're an offensive lineman and, I, and you get beat on your blocks every time and, and I watch you and your warm-ups are, are, are no good, we're going to have a talk. Like, hey, man, see how this transfers. If you don't get any better, I don't want you on my team. So that's how I would deal with it. I don't know. You're not big on calling people out. And like calling people out, you got to understand personalities are all different. You call somebody out, you might lose them in the locker room. It's like Hardos would say, oh, I don't care. Well, I care. Like, you know, these guys are humans, man. You want them to play. You want them to hit their ceiling. You're trying to make them as good as you can, 
right? You forget about the money and all this other stuff. It's like, I want you to be good. That's my job. So a lot of the abrasive stuff that maybe you saw back in the day, not as much now, but there are consequences. You can just be stern and honest. We're going to do it this way. Do it the best you can. If it doesn't work out, we'll figure something out. But if you're not even going to try, find somebody else. How the Titans progress? We talked about it. Do some stuff in the passing game. Certainly have a lot of talent. Made some good. Musgrave made some good catches in particular. Running game's got to improve. You've got to just keep improving. And again, I don't think it's a want to thing. It's what we're just talking about. You got to teach him how to do it, and teach him how to do it, and teach him how to do it, and, and, until it becomes automatic. Does seventy five earn the right to start over seventy six? No, not in my opinion. He got bull rush to play after we talked about him and Myers are screwing up the you know both pull left or whatever. Who was on first deal? Um, listen, I think long term you got to ask yourself: Is he is he a better talent? And and I, I think at this point with four and six season, you know who knows what's going to happen here. But you're probably thinking like, are we projecting out that he's going to battle for a starting spot next year? Is that what we're doing right now? We're going to start giving. Our, our, let's ask me this: Is he deserve to get two series next? If he got one series this week, is he deserve to get two next week? Yeah, he does. Like, does he deserve to get more than he's getting right now? Probably. Uh, do the Packers have a personnel evaluation problem? I'm not even going to touch that one. Uh, listen, when you sometimes when you draft high, you know, Lucas Van Ness, 13th, right? You're getting more production out of what, some some of the later guys. Dobbs last year, Reed in the third, Wicks. I forgot what he was. He's sixth. So there's kind of expectations for different levels. The big thing is. Are you guys making those decisions in harmony with the staff? Like, does the staff just desperate to get uh, Lucas Van Ness with the 13th pick in the draft because they think like he's going to help right now? Or are you, from a philosophical standpoint, thinking like, listen, Jordan Love's not going to be ready this year. We we want we want to be good in 2025, and he's going to be a 2025 guy. And all of that you have to live with. But the big thing is, and I've been on both sides of this as far as as far as how teams are structured, organizations work. Are they saying in meetings that they're really working together? Or is it like right now where you go look at like some of the bottom of the barrel teams talking about who they picked at quarterback and who they should have picked, you know, and everyone's kind of coming out saying some different stuff, right? That's the the big thing is that really when the doors are closed and they're having a conversation. Are they thinking like we wanted, and I'm just using Van Ness as an example because it's an easy one. He's a first round pick. Do we want Van Ness now when we think he can play now? Or do we want Van Ness for two years from now? Because we all think we're going to be here two years from now. And we think that he's going to be a big help. So I think that's the way you have to look at that. Like it's, you know, and there are guys, listen, I could, I would evaluate personnel completely different than, than people on their, on their staff. Cause I look at things different. I just look at things differently. That they probably have a system that they've been using that they've always used that 99% of the teams use. And have they evolved? I don't know. I mean, you really don't know because there's a lot of things that need to evolve in that system. I, the one at least that I saw four or five years ago is archaic, but they have a process that they go through and, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, you're not going to hit on everything. Uh, how would you like rank the wide receiver room? You know, it's funny, the Packers wide receivers, it looks you have like the fast guy, you have the route runner, you have like your X and your Z and your slot guy. It's like you have everybody you want. And now you you might have a, another guy with Wicks because you run four. So I, it's not like I, I wouldn't rank him. I just like you feel like you have the positions covered. You have like you, you think of Dobbs as like maybe your route runner. You think of Christian Watson as the guy who takes it over the top. You think and, and you don't want to pigeonhole him, but just like from a trait standpoint, this is like in the 90s and 2000s, you kind of just built these trait players, right? Then you have your small guy who's in the spot, you know, slot, the Wes Welker guy. You, so it kind of makes sense the way they have this thing built out. Um, but I don't know from a ranking standpoint, I don't know, don't really care. <laughs> and then one of my buddies says, Does this game and his response get Staley fired? I, if Staley's got a job at the end of the year, I'd be shocked. I'm shocked that he had a, a job at the end of the Jaguars game last year, to be honest with you. Um, the way he responded to that yesterday was, um, you know, obviously these guys are frustrated. Like, you know, Matt LaFleur probably took some more ownership on this game than he did last game when he's, you know, Aaron Jones did this, Christian Watson ran this route. You know, like when you lose and you're losing, you know, they're human. Like they're going to, you know, they get butt hurt too. It happens. But it's easy to say, oh, it's on me when you win. You know, it, it's hard to say it. You know, after you've lost four in a row, Staley's, you know, 
you're a head coach, a defensive guy, you got the worst passing defense in the league. You just, you gave up a 300, you know, the guy's never had 300 yards in his life. And you just give up 300 yards to Jordan Love for the, you know, his, his, his first outing for 300. And he, you know, he's, I, it's really tough to be in those locker rooms. Man. I've been in those locker rooms. It's really tough to be in those locker rooms where you just don't know, you know, those guys are probably over there going like, what do we got to do? They're good players. Like we're NFL guys. Like, why can't we fix this problem? What's wrong with what we're trying to do? And then your coach comes out and says, I believe in what we're teaching. I believe in my philosophy. I believe in my play calling. And you, and I'm just being honest with you. I can't speak for anybody in there, but I guarantee there's people in that room going like, no, you, no we don't. Because if we did, we wouldn't be 32nd. If we bought into what you were doing and how you were doing it, we wouldn't be 32nd in the league in passing. So enjoy the week, guys. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Rate and review us on our Prostitute Perform channel on YouTube. You can find me at MikeWall68 on Twitter and process to perform on Instagram. We'll be back on Thursday. No, we won't. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'll do a preview show for the Lions somehow. I'll figure it out. They had a good game versus the Bears this weekend, but we'll figure something out. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you soon.